question. I started this, was used to be a classical speaker bureau 19 years ago. Um, when I was still employee and started to think about uh, becoming an, like a, a businesswoman myself, I met one of the best brain trainers, memory trainers in Europe. His name is Gregor Staub. And through Gregor, I learned that there is such a thing as a speaking uh, world and that speaking is a business. And then I started managing Gregor Staub, who is fantastic. And for the first maybe five years of my like speaker bureau career, I was most of the time organizing his um, tournée. He is working for schools and universities and companies. And then I got to know the German Speakers Association through him because he was one of the founders and um, start to get to know people that some of you know, like uh, Michel Rossier and uh, many colleagues from the German Speakers Association, Thorsten Jekel um, and all the others. And um, because Gregor said, work with Karen, she's a good organizer, my agency rose. And um, it's called Team Karin Burger because when I can say some one thing, Without being a team and in a crowd of wonderful people, I wouldn't be where I am today. So that's how it started. As a single mom with two children, um, growing slowly, have had the first employee, then the second, and now we have four. So yeah, it just grew. I didn't, I didn't plan, it just grew. Well, I... What can I say? It's all about listening to people that are more intelligent than I and that know m more than I. I mean, I have an agency and I gather talents and brains and hearts. I, I gather people around me and that's my agency um, that know more than I, who do better than I, and I never hesitate in, in asking people. I, I always tell my children, I have two beautiful sons who are 10 and 17, um, not never hesitate to ask. And um, if I'm good at something, if you call me and say, Karen, I have this problem, I might not, I, I might not know the solution, but I'll know somebody who, do, who does. And this very um, typical Karen character, or how do you say that? This is very typical for me. I can just ask people. So this is like the heartbeat of my company. I just, if a client says I have this problem or this um project I will know someone who is good for that project that's all I do that's my agency that's the speaker bureau I'll, I'll listen to the, the 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 topic and listen to the people and then I find someone who is good at that and then that's how I make money that's all I do I can tell my story the virus came into my reality end of February I was in London Heathrow um, I had visited my au pair family because I was young and I was an au pair many years ago so I visited them and they had disinfection on their doorstep like you know and I thought what is that for I didn't I had heard about the virus but I thought it was a flu as everyone did end of February you remember and then a, a friend of mine called me and she was working for a huge insurance company and said, Karen, just telling you, we just got an email that all events are cancelled until the end of the year. That was in February. People don't know, but now you know. So you run and invent yourself because your company is not going to exist if you don't. There will be no presents. And why did she know? Because, of course, insurances work with um, politicians and stuff. So they knew before we knew. So that was when I actually called Thorsten Jekyll and I can only cite him a million times because I called him and said, Thorsten, this is what I just learned. She was a, a common friend of and client of ours. And what are we going to do if everyone cancels now? Because it was up. It, I knew this is was going to come. I thought, what, we have 150 events coming up this year. What is going to happen if they all cancel? And Thorsten said, well, no problem. We'll stream it. And I said, what is that? What word is that? Stream. I didn't know what he was talking about. So, and then for that weekend, we spent hours and hours on the phone and I started learning the vocabulary that we all have now, Zoom and Skype and whatever, you know, and Thorsten was the first to explain to me what's possible. And then I wrote my first email to my 3,000 clients on the 5th of March and said, we called it the event, a Corona event task force. And we said, here's five problems you will have and here's five solutions. So we told them what's possible from our then point of view. If I read it now, I must smile because many things have changed since then. But we were very early in saying, okay, if presence is not possible, 
we'll just transform it into new things. And we didn't even know what we were doing, but we, we pretended. And then we had the first clients to trust it in us and started trying out trial and error. And then we did the first events and then it was May. And then I did one for the University of Passau. So as we were walking along the crisis and then there was the shutdown in Germany and my kids were at home, but I was working like mad to learn and learn and learn. And actually I was happy because I had the speaker bureau for what, 18 years. And it was a bit like playing basketball where they put the basket in front of your breast. You, you, the ball gets in every time, but it's too easy. You know, you're not, you don't thrive anymore because it's too easy. I was, I liked what I did, but it wasn't, there was no thrill anymore. And the virus was the catapult and it just threw me in a new world and I loved it. And we were working night and day. And ever since I did not have a clean weekend, none. And when I come at home at night still, and it's 8.30, my children go, oh, mommy's here. That's good. That's early because I work and work and work. But it, why? Because I love it. And I find now, and you see in my back here, the online event expo, we did a huge online expo that started last week and it will last for a whole year. Everyone can enter. There's no registration necessary. And you can walk through 42 virtual stands and learn about the speakers. There's more than 40 speakers represented and it's growing. So um, I can actually, as an agency, say the classical speaker business has shrunk by 90%. But the virtual speaking business is slowly growing because all of you will start learning which skills you need to use, what you have to learn. And the ones who are broad, broadly, like, who can also already juggle all these new talents you need, and I mean, we hear a crowd of people who know what I'm talking about, I don't have to list them, get back into business. But the ones who say, I'm waiting for the virus to disappear, I want my life back, I must say, I don't believe that that will happen. Because we have transformed, we didn't, it's not the second best solution, we transforming and you have to come along and transform with us and dig deep down in your heart and in your talents and get them all out and believe that you can connect with your audience just as well through this medium as you did before from stage. And then maybe we have both. And then in two or three years, the ones who have learned that can, um, can make clients happy in the whole range of possibilities. And that's what I will be um, pushing. You have to perform the same. And I mean, looking at the two of us, you see here, you have a real background, I guess. That's not virtual, right? It's your wall and your books. Now I chose this virtual and with the bad bit that you have a little, like when I move my, move my hand, I don't have the most ex uh, expensive camera here. So it has bits that aren't perfect, but I want to give a message out. This is my new work and I believe in virtual formats. I can change this and I, uh, I might do it later to a real background. So it's not all about technique. And if you listen to people like Thorsten Jekyll, who is brilliant in this top technical stuff, he is actually taking back technical stuff and using more real stuff again. And um, we have colleagues like Bert Helbig, who is brilliant, who has transformed immensely the last few days and weeks through our expo because he had to learn a lot. He's actually having a real background and he uses paper and pens. Uh, he does not play with too much, too, too much technical stuff because that's another thing we can learn now. How much do we want to use? Um, less is very often more. So the ones who hate technique, don't hesitate. You have to have a good camera. You have to learn the, the basic rules, but you don't have to become a, a, a technician. It's still your performance. And that's what I want to get out. The performance you're good at will still be important, but you have to add other things to it. And if you don't, you have to find a new job. That won't be the future. That's what I believe. Right. And once um, another thing, my agency, I work with brilliant, brilliant people. Um, my speakers, which I call a fine selection of speakers and artists, um, will never give the same speech twice, full stop, ever. I would not work with someone who does that. That's not a speaker. That's a what? That's theater. That's different. So the interaction and, and think it's a new way of thinking. If you now work, it's more like a small television format, but the, the, um, the good thing about it is 
that you can ask your audience as a very brilliant crowd. You can use their intelligence. You could use the crowd intelligence for your speech. You can ask them, you can interact with them. And that's so fantastic. And it's uh, even easier because if you're in a big hall and you have 200 people and you ask them to raise their hands, um, you know the game, it's boring and uh, it won't give you the truth because if my boss watches me, I will not raise my hand even though I would like to, but if you ask me online or you even in the hall, you, you know, you have a big location in 2023 where here 500 people and you ask them to get their phones out and tell you your opinion, you will because your boss doesn't see what you write and you get truth. That's another thing. Through these digital formats, you get the truth because people dare to say what they think. And if I'm a CEO and I want to really, really know what my people think, I get a fantastic speaker on the topic I need and ask him to ask critical questions and I will get maybe painful answers, but those is the, are the truthful answers. So I believe that these formats have so many good things to it and we can play with it and um, the audience will enjoy it. Yeah, nobody will sit there and snooze and think about sex while you're speaking. No, they will be there because you involve them, you know. I'll be doing a talk with Katja Schleicher and Tom Friedländer, who is a fantastic pianist and singer. And we will show you in a light talk with his piano um, why and how it's important to make online events emotional with music and art. And I think that is one of the most important things we need to work on for the next time to come.